What's up? Welcome to a new episode of Movie Schmovie. This is episode number 388. My name is Steve, one of the co-hosts, and as always, I'm joined by Ron and John. It's been a bit, guys. Uh, yeah, we've had weird. a little bit of a lull uh, in in episodes here, but uh, it's and we were good. about to have another lull if we didn't <laughs> if we didn't make this happen hey, tonight. Yeah. So you make know. it make it happen, and yeah. and and that we did, and it's good to see you guys, and I'm glad we could get together to finally do Ronald's pick for required viewing. It's finally it's, it's been just hovering. We've given every. It really was just us giving people more time to watch it. Yeah, on all of the available platforms that you could watch it on. Or to watch uh, it right away and then process for a little while. Yeah, yeah. sit with it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, sit Ian with Lake, this one for a while. I want you to sit with this one on your own for a little while. <laughs> we'll we'll get to that in a Good second. Place We're going to gonna do e the required viewing. Uh, Ronald's pick for Eden Lake. We're going to talk a little bit about the first, uh, I guess, couple episodes of the new Apple TV uh, Plus series, The Changeling, starring Lakeith Stanfield. Um, and then, you know, I think we all finally saw, well, John had seen it a while ago, but I think we all finally saw Barbie. So maybe we'll have a little Barbie conversation towards the end um, of the podcast. And then, I don't know, that'll be a podcast. That'll be the episode, I think. Um, but yeah, Ronald, Eden Lake, you want to remind us about this film, why you picked it? Yeah, maybe man. Just jump into the conversation. The 2008 James Watkins hoodie core movie. Hoodie core. Hoodie yeah. core. I'm glad crazy. you said that. <laughs> I read that and I was like, man, there's a genre of scary movies with with hoodie kids. A hoodie Fair horror, ho hoodie core. Hood, uh, yeah, yeah, hoodie core, hoodie horror. I've seen many variations, but this is the 2008 movie. Um, yeah, it, it it's a it's a bag of disturbance starring Kelly Riley, Michael Fassbender, um, Jack O'Connell. Uh, Finn Atkins. This one is <sighs> disturbing, and I'm bleak. I'm glad, it's so bleak. I'm glad that I took the time that we took the time, the weeks that it took for us to record this <laughs> this 388. Because man, was this a rough one. I I keep hearing, I kept hearing this one as a one that like, man, you wanna you wanna get freaked out. You see Eden Lake. You know, you sit around in the dark and you watch this movie, and if this is a movie that could only have affected me so much as an adult, I don't know if I would have as yeah. a 20 year old early adult. I don't know if I could have processed this to say, I'm like, oh, these scoundrels, but e even a, more, even more so as a parent now. Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hell yes. It's exactly I, as a parent. I, I, as a, I would say that's the thing from when I, I remember seeing it around when it came out ooh. and haven't since then, obviously now I have kids and watching it for this episode. It was, you know, I, I felt the same way I felt about it when I first saw it, but it, it definitely was another lens mm. to watch this movie, especially the third act of the movie uh, when the parents come into play. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. It was it was interesting rewatching it through that new newly acquired lens that, you know, that is my life now and all of our lives. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just no, oh, no, 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 no. I think it seems like we all may have had a similar uh thought process at least yeah. at some point because i had the same thought oh I, I i'm so glad i'm going to be talking to two other dads or two other parents mm, after yeah. seeing this movie because it does like you do put yourself in the shoes of of course the protagonists are the most relatable characters in the thing and but you you recognize what they're up against at the, especially at the end throughout the movie i'm wondering like how is this gonna look yeah when, like i always think like if the police were to pop in and sort of save the day at any point yeah. how would this look what would this yeah. look like was happening and i think the movie gives you an, a, an unusually nightmarish version of of the scenario where of of how it could be received you know like yeah. this is yeah. a terrible situation to be in at the end of this movie um but I do think that the that's just thematically just that idea. It's like it starts to creep up on you right when you're starting to get these kind of satisfying beats of like retribution and kind of vengeance. And you're sort of happy she's getting her. Well, I won't say too much, but you're happy to see one of the protagonists get their licks in, you know. Yeah, and I, know. I think that like that feeling is sickening because this movie is sickening. But you do. There was a point about two thirds in where where Nikki, I watched it with Nikki and she doesn't normally watch this kind of movie. She said, what is this movie? Give me a little 
log line on it. And I said, well, it's not a story about two yuppies that go out to a remote area and have a great time. Because <laughs> yeah. she was she was like watching the couple driving off together. And I said, but I won't I don't want to say too much more about it than that. And then she was watching it and about two thirds. in, she said, I have a feeling this is not going to give me a very satisfying feeling at the end. And yeah. I said, oh, you know, and then there's a moment that was kind of satisfying. I said, well, that moment's yeah. pretty satisfying. She's like, yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. And it's like, that one's pretty satisfying. And I knew the whole time. It's like, I know she's going to end this movie kind of being like, and she was she was like pissed. She was like walking around going like, well, now I'm in a bad mood. That yeah. is, <laughs> um, and, 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 and I think that like, I don't know, I, I, I think that is that is a totally valid. And to me, I funds the wrong word, but that is a totally like, uh, um, <clears throat> I don't know, uh, worthwhile movie going experience to have a movie that leaves you feeling the yeah, way that Nick yeah. felt, you know. But I also think that um, there is a question sometimes where you're like, why did I put myself through that? And I really got into like, what is the movie trying to really leave us with? And that final yeah. image of the kid with the sunglasses Man. is very much like, that's what it's trying to leave you with. And I think there's all kind of good creative stuff you can read into that, but there's also some interesting like social shit you can read into that because this, I said to Nikki, like, do you think the theme of this movie is that like, and I'm not saying this is what I think, but I'm saying this movie seems to be saying like, aren't working class, working class people terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, isn't everybody aren't blue collar folks, just a bunch of like it, there is this weird thing where there's nobody in that world that seems to care about what we could see as like the moral thing that's happening. And then I looked into yeah. it and I saw there were some critics who criticized it as being like a class warfare kind of jab that suggests that poor people or that just rural people or whatever are all evil. And it's like, I don't really think that's the way this movie no, feels, no. but I do think by like blurring the lines between what we normally think of as like a horror scenario, like say Texas Chainsaw or something, you know, which has a similar arc to it where it's like, you just go into someone's territory and then you're fucked. Right. Th that has like a, you know, they're heightened. This is so grounded and so believable that it does yeah. feel like this could be anywhere and this could be happening any, any, any town. Yeah. So I think that, I think there is an interesting thing where I did ask myself, like, is this movie trying to say anything about youth or is it about trying to say anything about a certain kind of mindset, this kind of uh, enclave, these people who would say, well, we're not going to call the cops. We're not going to let outsiders come in and mess with our shit. Like there is something the movie may be trying to say. I don't know that I got a clear message, but I know that that last image is so chilling to me of just of, of who we're left with at the end there and the circumstances, especially what he does with the phone. Um, you know, it's just one of the most evil endings of a movie I've yeah. seen in a while. A lot of, a lot of movies we watch that are bleak still let you off the hook a little bit more than this one does. This is just, yeah, it's you know, brutal. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think about all that social, social critique stuff? Do you think the movie's trying to take a stand on anything or, or with a message? Or do you think it's really just like, this is a compelling grounded scenario and you can, the, the reality of it is what makes it, so effective uh I, well i'll i'll first say that i know this population of people they have no race it's just like a very like keep it keep it in the community but also like anybody who represents anything different is an enemy um i think i think i think as a person i'm a pretty positive person and i yeah. and i have to say this when i see things like this come up it's are fake it's that's that's fictitious bullshit that people like to put in movies to make themselves feel better sure the law comes around and helps people sometimes but a lot of the times there's a lot of awful people villains sometimes live forever you need to know that as a person <laughs> you need to know that a villain sometimes will do the thing and then act like they didn't do the thing you know, you you have to know these things about the world. Doesn't mean that the world isn't beautiful and there are there aren't kind people that'll help you, but you have to understand that this version of people exists to sometimes steer clear. Cause you they had a million signs that kind of said, like, maybe we should get the fuck out of here. You know, and and sometimes yeah. you have to make those adjustments. Yeah, Ronald, I I I I I was thinking this is uh uh boyfriend decisions I wouldn't make the movie. <laughs> It's green room. It's green room, <laughs> but it it it's it's less obvious that it's green room at first. Like the the walls close in a little. The the walls a little bigger. Yeah, but when it closes in, it's like this. What can you do? 
Well, I was sitting there. I could tell Nikki was getting so agitated. I was like, Nikki, I would have let that go. I would have moved to a different beach. I would have said, let's camp someplace else. I would have, I would have, I would have said, you know what? They stole our car. Let's just walk away. I mean, there's so many points where I would have said this is stacked against us. Even if it seems like maybe, and and this is where I'm getting into that kind of more horror scenario. There's a moment where you go, could, could they have done anything to get out of this situation? Like, I don't know, but definitely what happens around the campfire changes changes the the level of what is a, is about to happen or at least 100%. it seems it, it, it accelerates it but i wonder like do you ever wonder that in a movie like this like if they had just yeah. kept walking in the other direction like would they have just gotten to the road and they would have gotten home and everything would have been fine or or would it never have been you know what i mean it, like yeah. it, was it was it already happening because the yeah. the guy yeah. the kid i forget brett the main the yeah, main brett. gang member bully um he was he was you know that guy is he kind of walks away with the movie almost literally at the end. But as far as like his character kind of driving what's happening in the movie, um, I wonder if he would have been happy just to steal the car and the phone and the wallet, yeah. or if like at that point he was already locked on to like, you know, destroying these people. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I feel like that character, like the whole movie, Brett specifically, like it is just like really looking for a reason to escalate every situation and whether it's him or the gang around him, that is driving that or the actions of, you know, Steven or um, what's her name in the movie? Ginny. Um, Ginny, like, or, or whether they kind of incite the reason to take it yeah. up, like with the dog or whatever. I just feel like, you know, that performance is so, so good because like you're, you can just kind of feel that kid waiting for like a green light to just be worse. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, yes and I feel like, especially when you get into the third act with the parents, um you kind of see that like what's the word like i i don't want to say that they that, that they just see nothing but green lights but i just feel like <clears throat> you know when when the parents come into play you can see like how easily they can manipulate the situation yeah. to to be oh, i'm just a kid you know like even though I'm a, I'm a i'm a human being like inflicting pain and killing people and it's just like they kind of they kind of prey on even if they argue with their parents and they hate their parents or like they rage against their parents or whatever, like when they need to, it's like, I'm still just a kid. And that's when the parents kind of come in and take over. And like, you see where this is like trickling down from. And yeah, yeah, right. No, I was was wondering if that's where you were getting to it. Cause I was thinking like the main thing that I see there is like, I see how this kid is the way he is. Yeah. And what you said too, though, uh, the other point is very big, just that as a parent, you're like, you know what, dude, I'm going to, if you want to, I mean, we could all be a Han Solo getting jabbed by Kylo Ren. You know what I mean? We would all take that walk out there and we would all try, if that was our son, that was our daughter standing there, we would all try to to believe in them and to trust in them and yeah. to like we would totally be foolable I, I'm, I mean if i'm gonna go down as a sucker and it's for my son that's probably you know okay i'm not i have nothing to protect myself against that but what yeah. the, but the other side of it which is that then you can see this kind of crazy bullying behavior and this hot-headedness that's trickling down no it it was it was almost yeah i mean it was almost too much for me when it got to the end because it's just like you know it's she, this, it's so stacked against her, and there's that brief second where you think, oh, this might be that the you know this might go, the, this might there might be some disagreement here about what to do about her, yeah, <laughs> yeah, do what to do about Jenny, and then when it's like they're kids, everyone's saying they were just kids, and then she's and then you realize that saying they started it doesn't it's like even though I'm a big believer in, I like to know who started it. I, people always have said, it doesn't matter who starts it. And I'm like, no, it totally matters to me. It who really started matters. It. <laughs> Tell it's, me more. It matters so much, but not in this situation, <laughs> not being a grown up talking about kids. It was like the most kid like thing she could have said, Oh, they exactly. started it, you know? Um, and, uh, but yeah, you, 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 you do like to see that, that come up in Zark that you're talking about, Ronald, that you do often get. And I, I think I wouldn't say it's complete bullshit. What I think is that what does somebody say that like a happy ending only works if that's where you stop the story? Yeah. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. Like for sure. The happy ending, it's like you have to like do run the other way real quick and not think about like what comes next, what comes the next day. Like as um uh I you know, like uh George R. R. Martin always said about Lord of the Rings, Aragorn, like what are his policies as king that make everything so great for the king? You know, like the, the stories never get into that shit. You just know, okay, he's the king, yeah. we like that. So I kind of think that like 
I kind of think that, you know, the the inverse of that is the story like this. And we always talk about it. I feel like I bring it up with a lot of horror movies of just like knowing when to end, knowing when to go to black. And I feel like it's a horror movie ending, but something about ending on the kid gives it this like, I don't know. Like I said, there's something kind of culturally, there's something about his dead eyed expression and yeah, and, yeah, for sure. And the fact that he's like putting on it, he's already kind of, you can see where he lives even beyond what you were saying, Steve, he lives in this world with this, yeah. with this, with his family, with who might be all hotheads and escalate situations or whatever. But he also clearly is in some kind of media inspired world of like wanting to be cool and maybe even wanting to be the guy he just destroyed, you know, yeah, totally. anyway, mm. that's heavy, man. Yeah, it's crazy. No, this was a, this was I mean this was uh, this was a, a, a I, it was not a pleasant what well, for for not a 90 a minute movie. Th- this is like the least brisk 90 minute movie I've ever <laughs> I, I felt every piece of that 90 minutes and I was enjoying it too. No, I yeah, just, it's really well done. Really well yeah, done. Yeah, I, I was I was ugh, cringing. So so when she got down in the like uh rotting trash com- mm-hmm. you know like container, why did she have to get her face down in it? I guess when the guy went to open it, she thought she had to completely yeah, hide yeah, or something. Yeah, she thought she had oh, to yeah. submerge herself. So. Cuz I thought that when she came out I was like that's a little overkill. You could have just like, you know, gone down to the waist in there. Yeah. But um anyway. Um no, that part was super gross. There was some really disgusting the the part where she had the thing in her foot is Yo, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. So what's who's who's the next pick? Steve, it's you. As I say, it's me. Wow. I should have I, I always question whose turn it is. And I was like, shit. Uh <coughs> prep for this. But you know what? I'm gonna go with um looking through my, my my watch list here. This movie's kind of popped up a few times on my uh my Twitter feed or my oh no, no, I'm just gonna call it Twitter. On my Twitter feed. Mm. Um, no, don't yeah, don't do X. Yeah, I refuse. Yeah. I refuse. Um but yeah, this is a movie. Uh, it's available for streaming. I got to find out exactly where. But uh, this is a movie called I Like Movies. Mm. Have either oh. of you guys heard of this? Mm-mm. I've seen the name and that's about it. OK, cool. So this is great. So this is, uh, I think, a Canadian film, but it came out earlier this year uh, or late 2022, maybe just just before the, the new year. But okay, this is yeah. basically about, you know, the a 17 year old movie lover who gets a job working in the video store and the friendships that he makes, you know, through okay. his coworkers and the customers that come in. And it's kind of like supposed to be like a coming of age comedy, a little indie, but a uh, documentary. It looked, the cover looks like a documentary. Graphic. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a, it's a feature narrative. Oh, um, wow. Cool. But yeah, I'm looking it up now on just watch to make sure where you can get it. Hopefully now, it does somewhere. look like a documentary cover and why Ronald, like I'm wondering like, what is that about that? That looks, <laughs> yeah. is it just that it's a non famous, non celebrity looking person sitting there? I think it Do, is. You I know what I mean? Is. Like yeah. we're used to seeing like a more, you know, like TV ready face or something on a, on a trip. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, this looks like it's only available like on demand and I, okay. I don't see it on uh, like a streamer currently. But uh, let me double check one more place. It's the type of picture it is too. It's yeah. It's not just that it's like a unknown person. It's it's. I've watched a lot of documentaries with this this sort of cover. Yeah, I think it's just uh. Yeah, it just looks like a picture like somebody took with their iPhone. Right. Yeah. yeah or, that's or, what it or, is. Or, or, or a lesser phone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like somebody was just like, Shh, and then took it. And, yeah. Cool. This is. I'm glad you picked something that none yeah, of us I, have seen. And... I'm actually looking to see. I don't. I, I, now, now I'm second guessing myself. I may have to scratch this. I'm trying to see. No. Well, People I'm just trying to, to see where see it. where it actually came out here. Seek it out. Seek it out. You. Yeah, it's world premiere in Toronto in t- September. Uh, it released theatrically in Canada in March. And it looks like it has a worldwide. So I guess the 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 digital version that i saw was maybe from the canadian release oh let me see if it's on like voodoo or something yeah let's check this real quick i don't want to i don't know if i should pick this if we can't like legitimately right. watch it you may have to cut that out john all right well yeah, i'll uh, do whatever edit needs to be done i'm sorry i, I thought this was already oh no oh, I, I, I see what you mean i think I, i'm sorry to see what you mean i'm, I'm like looking it up and yeah, I, I guess I assumed it was already because this was like a year ago that it showed at TIFF, which is where I like. Yeah, see, so people were picking it. I don't know. Maybe I should pick a different one. I'd rather try to find something that's at least available at home. Yeah. Sorry. 
Oh, no, that's cool. Let me double check this one and see when this comes out. Um, hey, I don't, I don't see any like. Any yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll grab a different one. Um, Shit balls. I was excited about that one too. I looked. Yeah, I mean, well, off off the pod. I mean, it's it's a it's it's out there. <laughs> um, to watch. <laughs> um, so what is this one? This is. I'm trying to make sure this other the other one I was going to pick is actually going to be on demand by the time we would do the podcast because I'm away next weekend. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, what's the date? September fifteenth. So the one, the next one I was going to pick, it comes on demand on the fourteenth. So when would okay. we? That'd be enough time, right? Yeah. Like if somebody yeah, wanted to check it out, sure. we would do the following week. Okay. Okay. Right, because we're not doing next week, and next right, week right, ends right. on the fifteenth. Right. Okay. So perfect. yes, so you can even set all that up. You know what I mean? You can even say to people, "This will be brand new on streaming as of this date or whatever." Yes. Verify. Spot. All right, perfect. So, yeah, I, I never really planned for this, but I mean, I'm looking through my list here and I think that there was a theater, there was a movie that just came out this late, like late summer that I kept hearing nothing but amazing things about. Okay. And it was at a couple of the festivals uh, earlier in the year, but um, I think it's coming out on demand. So it would be coming out next week on, I think the 14th or the 15th, and it may even be on streaming on, on Hulu, but I know it's going to have some sort of digital release on the 14th. So I guess next Thursday, Friday area. But this is a movie that came out uh, earlier this year. Uh, or I'm sorry, late, later this summer, uh, starring Ben Platt, uh, Molly Gordon, Amy Sedera. It's called Theater Camp. Mm. And um, I've heard nothing but amazing things. Uh, the trailer's Same. great. Um, it's just it's basically about the staff at this rundown theater camp in New York. And they kind of come together together. Uh, to kind of keep the camp afloat, basically, to kind of okay. create this effort to kind of keep the, the the camp going. But I've heard the music's great. Performances are super fun. That is very funny. Um, but yeah, I didn't have a chance to see it in theaters. It had kind of like not the not the best release, at least where we are here. I know it was at one of the theaters by me, but I, I just, you know, I didn't I didn't get there in time. It was sometime in July when it was released. But um, it looks like uh, September 14th, it'll be on Hulu. So if you have a Hulu or if it's coming out as a digital on demand, uh, if you want to rent it or buy it, it'll probably be out around the same time. Um, but yeah, this is called Theater Camp. So we'll be doing this um, not next week, but the week after. So the what is that? The 22nd, uh, Friday the yeah. 22nd. Um, so that'll be the one that we go through for that week's episode. So you have a week or so to check it out if you want to watch along with us. But um, but yeah, this was a this is a, a little bit of a sleeper movie this summer. That it, again did, did did fairly okay um for the release it had and but it had great reviews and a lot of the cast i love the one guy that was from the first season of american vandal uh the who drew the dicks season uh yeah the, the that that dude the the, the guy that yeah season, that guy yeah, he's he's, he's in this movie like he's so good in in a lot of what he has been in that i've seen him in and uh he jumps out in the trailer, so I'm excited to see him in this. But yeah, theater camp that'll be next it week or the next. Looks episode. very very funny. Like just looks very like open hearted and sweet and funny from the. And I'm trying. Yeah, I'm coming off Eden Lake, and I'm going to say let's just kind of upswing. Thank this. you. We're going to let's go. go. Let's go out to a rural, remote area and have a different experience. You know? Yes. Let's this right. other side of the pillow, guys. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, theater camp next okay. episode. Thank um, you, man. Thank you for yeah. a cleanse of the palate. Yes, there it is. There it is. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so what's next? Let's talk about talk about cleansing watch. the palate. Let's talk about the light and frothy show, The Changeling. <laughs> yeah, I said that was the next episode. We're not out right. of the woods. <laughs> yeah, with, with, yeah. With, with oh this, my god. Well, we're out of the woods, but we're in New York City. But we're in New it's York a, City. Sorry. Yeah. 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 But it's a spooky version of New York City. Yeah. Um, I just want to come off saying that this is a series based on. Uh, the book, The Changeling by Victor Laval, who is great. People should just read his books. He's, okay. he's fantastic. And he was given um, an unusual amount of uh, creative input. Like he was given input oh, wow. on all the all the scripts. Wow. He was um, he was uh, 
uh, allowed to visit the set whenever he wanted to. And he narrates it. That voice of the narrator the is, is the author. Yes. That's, That's cool. really cool. And if you see pictures of Victor Laval from, you know, a few years ago, uh, he was dressed. He had the little hat. He was dressed basically like Lakeith Stanfield's character in the movie. And he said this movie was this. Well, the book or the I can't, movie, the show. Yeah. Um, uh, he said that this book, he started writing it when he started when he caught himself doing all these crazy things as a father, like overthinking the diet and reading all this stuff mm. and going on going on, uh, you know, uh, online groups and chats and stuff that like he realized he was kind of going off the deep end as how seriously and, you know, how much effort he was putting into being a dad. And he said that it was like the perfect kind of inspiration for this kind of story. And I felt like, again, talk about as a parent looking at the kids and what they do yeah. in Eden Lake. I thought the same thing yeah. about talking about this show with you guys. It's like this is a there's there's a lot of motherhood in this show, too. And I think in the episodes we've seen, we haven't quite seen the full gamut of what the mother's stories are. But right. I think just as a dad, I, I relate a lot to Lakeith Stanfield's sort of. <laughs> The way he's handling it, like, yeah. he, you know, he's doing yeah. a great job, but he's also maybe not doing everything right. I don't know. I just think it's a really uh, I just think it's a really interesting. I I, I like him. I like him in this role. Um, I think the characters on this show might be the strongest thing about it, that there's just a uniqueness to the 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 world and the characters. But I, I don't know how much it's going to deviate from the book. The book gets really crazy. I think the show has room to get pretty crazy. Uh, what do you guys think? Not you know, not knowing where this is going. How do you feel about uh, the first? I, I watched the first three because the first three uh, come out <clears throat> uh, today, the day this podcast comes out. Um, after that, I think it goes weekly or maybe two a week or something like that. Um, yeah. But how do you feel after your first dose? I mean, it was yeah, Ronald. It's, it's a first and foremost a beautiful show. I mean, that's the that's you know the version that was. No offense, Apple. The version you give us doesn't quite look like the one that comes on the on on the actual <laughs> Apple TV. Plus. Right. Love you guys, but yeah. I know you don't want to just give us the highest quality version. People bootleg them like crazy. But even with the little portion that we have, it looks gorgeous. It's a gorgeous looking show. Um, acting all around is is incredible. Um, I, I don't know if I was ready for how sad it got. I watched it with yeah. Aaron, who mm. is, you know, a mom a year and a half in, and I could, I could tell that there were parts where she was just like, I know what this is, <laughs> you know, it's like that part, that portion where sometimes you need, it, it, it's a hard thing to talk about, but, um, they talk about it on uh, not Tenant. What's the other uh, Christopher Nolan movie? The Spinning Top, right? Sometimes you Inception. need a thing yeah. in in reality that lets you know that you're aligned with reality, right? And sometimes yeah. when you when your pre when your people around you aren't really giving you some assurance that you're not going crazy, you could you could fall really. Quick. Oh man, there's such a disconnect between them over those texts yeah and yeah. it is so you could not get yourself out of that situation ever yeah like yeah. It, neither one of them can right. understand what's happening you know what i mean that could yeah. happen once and nothing else weird could happen in your marriage and yeah. that could drive a wedge between you because yeah. there's that moment where like you said ronald yes a woman is feeling vulnerable and like no one's believing her and he is looking at every bit of evidence he has in front of him and he's trying to do and say the right thing and it amounts to not believing her you know yeah and yeah. it's incredibly hard. Like, I agreed that that was incredibly sad. I felt that rift because they that had such so a sweet sad, romance man. that I was so sad to see, like, here's something that she's not going to ever be able to get past the way that he, yeah, like, or at least not naturally. She's not going to easily get past 100%. him basically like, oh, take some pills for that, you know? Yeah. The romance was so beautiful, man. Like, seeing him kind of come back to the library and, you know, they have this chemistry. She's obviously beautiful. And he's like the most handsome dude with the, an incredible voice. And he's only 32 years old, which yeah. makes no sense that he feels like this very lived in person. It's His eyes are the, the killer. Because <laughs> if you notice, there's one shot, maybe I don't know if it was in the second or third episode. I don't know how far you got, but there's one shot that's like a distant shot of him that's framed at, like in the corner of a shot. And it's just an, an interesting shot. And he's looking up 
And I swear, even though his eyes are like little dots on the screen, they're so expressive, even at that distance. He he can do this thing where his eyes get wet and he kind of flutters yeah. his eyebrows. It's like a Lakeith move. Some one day someone will do a supercut of the Lakeith uh, eye bar, <laughs> eyelid flutter. But like um uh I no, I just I think, yeah, there's something he brings to that character. And she's amazing. Like I, I don't really know. I know people know her from Letterkenny. I don't really know that show yeah. very well. But I thought she was just had a real like offbeat energy to her and even her walk everything about her has got this kind of very uh, it, it really helps that characters pop as i was saying the fact that they feel so distinct and i did like seeing their their sparks that kind of flew like i liked him saying one of your eyes is bigger than the other and she's like oh my god i can't believe you said that and he was like no i mean it in a nice way yeah <laughs> that is a compliment <laughs> You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And yeah, and they do they do play it close. That whole idea of him continuing to kind of badger her into dating him. They own up to how like this could be seen as creepy or it could be seen as stalking. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like in cinema language, we understand that that can also mean there's a spark and and we find out why she's not giving into it later. It's because she's about to move, you know, so she yeah. wasn't like she wasn't actually not giving him a little encouragement. She was just not able to say yes um no that was that was very very uh uh well done the little romance but yeah watching it going i know how bad this is gonna get real fast uh yeah yeah steve what'd you think no i mean i'm in obviously like i think you know i've only i only watched the first two uh but uh yeah i mean the standout definitely is the two leads i'm not i i do know her i've seen a couple episodes letter kenny but I mean, Lakeith is just like, you know, one of the more consistent, you know, even when stuff that he's in is maybe not that great. He's always the standout or at least something that is, is very easy to, you know, enjoy. Uh, but, yeah, this is a great start to a series. It, it is kind of one of those, uh, you know, secret or what's it? What do they call them? Uh, a puzzle, puzzle box. box or, yeah, yeah. A puzzle box, you know, series, which I, I'm, I'm or a mystery always, box, maybe is what they call it. Yeah. I'm always game for that. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm kind of curious uh, where the show goes and whatever it is, like eight to ten episodes, you know, if it's kind of like if there's enough story there for that, because it does feel like yeah. even early on in the series, it feels like something that uh, would, would be would be set up to be like a multi-season kind of show mm -hmm. uh, or could be at least if that was the motivation. I mean, and I'm yeah. not familiar with the source material, so um but yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, the start to kind of and, you know, something else I really loved, I mean, especially in the first episode um like the 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 way that they kind of handle <clears throat> the 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 jumping around in time like kind of going to talk about his parents and her parents you know just you see these like these small scenes or sequences where you get like little pieces of information and you know about his dad's background and like you know the name the, the naming of him and you see like it's just it's just a really kind of like nice amount of time to it's it's just about the right amount of time to spend yeah. in a flashback not involving the character directly that we're with in real time, you mm -hmm. know, which is like, it, and I thought that it was all handled really well. So if that's something that, you know, continues through the series, I'd be curious, like how that kind of fills in, uh, especially like with the missing, uh, you know, the disappearance of his father. I think that stuff is really interesting and where that goes further in the series. But yeah, I mean, again, like Apple, I mean, they make great looking shows, man. And like yeah. really kind of compelling stories with great actors, actresses, performances, um, and this had a really great like trailer, you know, too. So I hope I hope people kind of check this out and give it a shot. Yeah, like John sure. said, the first three episodes come out when this episode drops on, on Friday the 8th. But yeah, I'm excited to watch. I, I, I again, I always say like with some of these series that we get access to, you know, as thankful as I am that we get it. I'm just like, how far do I go ahead of this? Because I, I eventually if I have to stop and wait for something. Yeah, you know, that's kind of that's kind of where I was at, like with the after party up until recently. It's just like, you know, how do I get through this series and then wait three or four right, right. weeks yeah. or, or a month or two to, to, to be able to finish it? But that that's a that's a I guess a good problem to have. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I definitely was digging it uh, for the first two episodes. Uh, huge fan of Lakeith and I love seeing him, Yeah, uh, especially in this kind of stuff, like a little uncomfortable, you know, like yeah. horror He's thriller. He's so good at he's, it. He's, he really is. And I mean, then you're talking about that look in his eyes. Like even the poster for the series. Like if you, if you look at the IMDb page or like the wiki, like the poster of him holding the baby, like yeah. the way he's kind of like looking up, like just that that look he's got. Like he's yeah, he's such he's got a, he's got a great look. Yeah. Um, oh, a shout out to Alexis Louder who plays uh lakeith's mom mm -hmm. who is from fucking cop shop one of the best action films in the past 10 years please see it 
younger version or or the younger version yeah because there's two great performances that we've or well i don't know the older version and i don't know when the older version is in it actually maybe that's the third episode that we spend some time with her but 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 there's there's really good stuff coming from both actresses but the younger one okay yeah she's really good yeah she's a great great lead i just like her in a lot of stuff but she kind of just popped up into my world like two three years ago and i'm like i love everything i see her in but cop shop is especially she was also in uh that david harbour santa claus violent night yeah she's great in that i didn't want yes she was so good in that um, and, we, and we haven't mentioned the actress who plays uh, Emma, the wife, uh, but oh, yeah. Clark, Clark Bacco is her name. So she's, I mean, and she's she, one from Letter Kenny. She's who, not from America. She's Canadian. She's. Can- I think this is. I think this is produced with a lot of Canadian uh, okay. financing, yeah. or uh, you know, in Canada, or shot in Canada as much as possible. A lot of places, a lot of shows are using Canada. Yeah. Uh, when That's they don't need, when they don't need like absolutely iconic locations that yeah, you can tell yeah. they spend a few days in new york and then the rest of the time in you know toronto or whatever it's funny you say that i was just at warner brothers studios and they were talking about how like they have a new york on the lot and yeah. then canada it's like <laughs> yeah it's like there and then, and then like atlanta if they really need a place they'll build a set in atlanta but like it seems to be like New York is Canada. <laughs> Canada also, an, is an interesting thing to look forward to, Sam, Samuel T. Herring, who's the lead singer of the Baltimore-based uh, band uh, Future Islands, he's he's a oh, major yeah. character in this show, and he pops up in the third episode. Dan Deacon does the music. Yeah, Dan Deacon does the music. That? Yeah, That's insane. Let's talk about it. Yeah, it's good. Shout and it's good. Dan, it, Dan Deacon. It's good. I mean, I've, I, I, the score... Like I, I found myself appreciating the score at a couple points, and then going, "Oh yeah, that's Dan." De-. Like it's not always what you would think from Dan Deacon. Yeah, uh, it you know has like the it, it's just like a traditional it's horror just... score in some spots, but it's like really well done. It's the good, yeah. Yeah. the good creepy evocative kind where it's about say, setting atmosphere up that just makes you feel funny. Really so cool, man. Well, you know, Move I don't you, don't you think represent. what don't you Gordon. think what makes this show worthwhile though is the right from the start. It's got that cool little vignette mm. with the ship on the water and the narration about like, oh man, about like people coming from coming from Norway and how did they survive this this trip and then saying they had help, and you just know that means there's some kind of higher power or something in this yeah. story. And then he says, um, "What is it? Tell me about your, tell me about your past, and I can tell you your whole story or something." But there's just like it's got the feel of like a fairy tale, yeah. And then yeah. it gets into this really, you know, very believable kind of scenario. And then it, occasionally, when it dips back out into that narration or that fairy tale, it reminds me of the way they use narration on Only Murders in the Building, um, which is like they'll open and close episodes usually with a character giving like a narrative monologue with the music on that show, which is so good. But it's like such a good way to like set you into the world is like. It doesn't always work to have narration, but when it's done well, it's yeah. such a good way to like, you know, give you some perspective and some context, but without doing like the like prosaic sort of narration that explains what's going on. It's more poetic. Yeah. It's a little bit more like this is the guy who wrote this the book this is based on, yeah. kind of giving you almost like he's the Rod Serling of a Twilight Zone episode saying this is like the human story that we're talking about right now. And, you know, but observing it from a little bit of a distance, you know, it it there's a, there's something really appealing to me about that. And I think like I don't know how they would go to a second season if they kill off the whole story of the book in one season, which they could. <clears throat> But the world they're setting up, the yeah. mythology that they're tapping into, yeah. could easily be part of a tapestry that grows and grows. And it, you know, I could easily see it being like a world people want to stick around in because it's got like there's a quality of fun to it that you maybe haven't seen yet. But when it gets really into the more mythological elements, it's got some crazy fun ideas. It's I'm not looking all, forward to that because I'm not so all sad incredibly right now. horrific and depressing. It's yeah. all it's, it's all got like a veneer of horror. But there's like it's like a it's like a mythological adventure almost yeah. more so than a than a horror story in a way. Yeah. OK. I mean, it's this this like and we also didn't talk about this like narrative of trauma, the trauma you bring yes. to a situation and how that affects relationships things people places you know and and sometimes trauma brings people together whether we know it or not there's like this like string that kind of pulls us unknowingly towards each other yeah um you're right they both have different trauma yeah like different yeah. like childhood parent trauma the dad stuff is like bothering the fuck out of me i can't figure out why it's like 
the, the, that image of the the, the smoke blue, the blue face the blues thing, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what yeah. am i what am i looking at I, <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> yeah i'm excited yeah We'll see you more. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, that starts this week on Apple TV Plus. The first so, three episodes come out, and then on a weekly basis from there. Um. So what else? What else? Uh, do we want to talk about Barbie a little bit, or do we, do we want to save that, or what do you guys want to do? <clears throat> well, that moment. Yeah. Do you think we would have a quick conversation about Barbie? I mean, it's been a while. We're we're coming yeah. in at the tail end of the phenomenon, so I guess yeah, yeah. We, we we could just have some some quick thoughts. Yeah, you know, there's sure. there's plenty of there's plenty of great discourse already out there about uh-huh. this movie. <laughs> and when I first saw it, I think I told you guys my general you know uh, feelings of you know I felt like I was sort of in line with the general herd uh, over this one. I I liked it a lot. I thought it was funny. I thought it had a lot. I think I think it's an interesting movie because I think some people wanted it needed it to be the best movie ever made and other people needed it to be some awful you know mistake that it that it wasn't um right. i don't know that I, i'm closer to the first group than the second group but right. i don't think it's like perfect or or anything but i do think that it somehow managed to you know it's just one of those movies that feels like somebody did a thing it's a complete statement you know and it and it is partially successful because it's a it's a historically well-known toy brand that has a lot of stuff associated with it. And it partially uh, was a huge success because of the word of mouth and all the, the, the reasons why people were excited about the kind of message and stuff and yeah. the, the humor of the movie. So, I mean, I just, I don't know. It's, we, we kind of talked about it as the, the Barbenheimer thing. This was just a win for movies in the middle of the summer of, of yeah. 2023 to have non superheroes, non sequels, um that people were that excited to go see so yeah I, I i feel very warmly towards this movie even though i could nitpick it if someone were to you know say yeah you have to nitpick it <clears throat> i think i mean us talking about it now is pretty well timed i mean the the digital release of this movie is this following tuesday so uh you know us talking about it on, on the 8th and it's available i think it's on the 12th you can buy it at home or rent it at home if you want to watch it again or if you never saw it until we like we did recently but um yeah, I think this is like a huge win in, in, as a movie. Like, I, I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, I, I probably would say the same thing. I don't think it's like a perfect movie. It's not like top top of the year for me. Uh, maybe maybe in the tops uh, 10, 15. I don't know of what I've seen so far. But um, I do think coming into it like kind of after the sensation probably excuse like my viewing of it only because I've all I've heard is just such amazing things from everybody I know, like literally people that never go to movies anymore, just telling me about the movie, which is one, that's an amazing thing. You know, like the idea that this is going to be the biggest movie of 2023. I don't think there's going to be anything that comes out that gets close to it. Like it's, it's done. Like this is the biggest movie of the year. You know, what started out as what would probably be like a two quadrant film became a four quadrant phenomenon and superseded any expectation. And on a daily basis in the weeks leading it to its release, its projections were like doubling, you know, because of great marketing, great reception, and just a great movie that was well made. And I yeah, think yeah. like the idea, like you say, John, you know, using this historical figure, this this toy, this icon, uh, and, and this brand as like kind of a launch pad for a really original film, you know, like mm-hmm. kind of a spoke in, in in the middle of, I think was a really great approach. And I think having you know, a great director like Greta Gerwig and a great cast all around this movie did nothing but just kind of take it to every next level that it probably could have went to, uh, you know, kind of going through this existential exploration of identity and, you know, you know, personhood, womenhood, manhood, like every every kind of thing that this movie is kind of stepping into. I think it kind of handles really well across the board. Um but yeah, I think it's extremely entertaining. It's very funny. It's got a lot of heart. I mean, there's some really, really great dialogue. The America Ferrera speech, like, I think is just, I thought was pretty incredible. Um, especially like with her daughter watching her speak this, you know, this, this like, you know, monologue. I thought that was great. Um, but yeah, the cast is really like what just, I think the performances really kind of are what just, uh, you know, kind of let this movie soar, even the narration by Helen Mirren and, right. like, you know, these little asides from like, you know, like what well, note to the filmmakers, you don't cast Margot Robbie as Barbie. Yeah. You know, if you want her to not look perfect, you know, well, it's like, yeah, the, she, she, choosing yeah. this, she, maybe you, this, this wasn't the right actress to make this point or something like <laughs> right, that. Right. 
uh, you know, that those kind of like winks. It just it just kind of just exudes this fun nature of the movie, even though it's really kind of tackling some heavy themes. Yeah. Um, and, and I think they balance that really well. Margot Robbie is incredible. I think she's great as Barbie. I mean, but I think that, you know, you walk out of this movie being like, I, at least, you know, most everybody that I've talked to going in and even myself, like Ryan Gosling just kind of like blew my mind. Like he yeah. is just he's a treasure. And we know how funny he is and how game he is, you know, the nice guys and even, you know, little comedic bits that he has in other movies that he's just he's just so fun to watch, especially when he's got something like this um, to do. And uh, well, he's willing to look so stupid. Yeah, that's and the it, best part. And, and it never hurts him. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I mean, it never yeah, hurts yeah, yeah, yeah. his status in my mind. Status, like, yeah, like he did it. You talk about nice guys. He, he, he's he got some great physical comedy in that. And that was a real revelation to me because it was like, yeah. oh, he's not just a cool guy. He can totally be like the putts. And he yeah, does yeah, yeah. like some I mean, he takes that to the next level as as Ken. And, and it's like I think as it's I've heard people say it's it's funny that um that guys think this movie is like, uh, you know, uh, the Ben Shapiro's of the world think this movie is some kind of anti men statement yeah. when the, Ken is they use him brilliantly to like illustrate something that I think we've all talked about, actually, yeah. maybe not on Mike, but like the how, how like so many guys don't seem to get that, like the patriarchy screws men too. Yeah, yeah, out of yeah, out yeah. of being themselves so often, yeah. and it's like so often that people act like that's not happening. Um, but I feel like this movie did a did a good job of making that point. You know, it's not just about horses, <laughs> like like oh my god, of, of making that point in a way that was funny and character driven and didn't take away from Barbie's arc. Even if what you're saying is very true, that if there is a takeaway from this movie, I have to say I think the Ken stuff is the is the is the real like you'll be talking about it on the way out of this is, yeah. is he's got he's got the moments in the yeah. in the movie I mean, outside of really... maybe the speech that you're talking that was another big moment but he's got like maybe the more dynamic character arc to go through barbie's a little bit more steady but i think mm. sometimes protagonists have that thing if you're not going to make your protagonist like wretchedly flawed which they, yeah, yeah, yeah. barbie's not then they sometimes don't have as much to do in the movie as the sort of villain which is what ken is essentially he's the antagonist oh. the movie that, that that you mentioned the horses that that line when like <laughs> When he's like, I never really even liked the patriarchy, especially when I realized it wasn't about horses. <laughs> like the way he delivers that is just like, oh, my yeah. God, I was dying. Well, I loved him when he first sees the world. And oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. First sees like like women. Like asked woman asked, what time yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, right. But it's like he, he he thinks it's so neat that the guys are in charge, you know, and again, it's yeah. like it's so innocent. That's the perfect. I don't know. They found so many perfect ways to make the joke they were making. And yeah. I think you, you can't discount like that. Greta Gerwig and co-writer Noah Baumbach. They're not like amateurs at this. They're both like, yeah. oh, pretty, so good. Pretty good so at writing good. movies, you know, and I, yeah. I I think that that was another huge thing for me. And I love hearing her talk about her choices and the things that influenced her and what she might want to do with other movies. I mean, I don't think she's going to be the kind of director that you can that you can pigeonhole. Um, no, for sure. Yeah. What did you what did you think, Ron? I mean, I mean, I got to see it. I'm I'm in a marriage with a woman who is going through the same thing with her niece. Like, so it's I, so I, I always think that like bonds between kids are the same, but like on no level is the bond that my wife had with her niece, anything like a relationship I've ever had before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she's, she's 12 and she's, and nothing's cool anymore that they liked nothing, yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah. It, it, and it's, it's heartbreaking to watch. It is, yeah. it is one of the hardest things in the world specifically because of the circumstances that brought them kind of close to see it happen the way that it's happening. Um, so it hit me kind of hard. Um, Greta Gerwig Trojan horses me every time with, with, with something I'm not expecting to feel mm -hmm. in a movie. So, you know, I was, I was tearing up a couple of times, like, but it, it is fun. Yeah. It is, it is irreverent. And I think that like Ryan is amazing. Simu, I feel like is not getting the credit. Uh, I feel like in, in America, the, they to me are like the, these kind of like people you should kind of be watching out for, too, because they, they're doing something different, like something a little yeah. like against the scroll like, guy was great, too. Yeah, there's like there's like these like 
characters in the background that are kind of like driving me crazy. How no, that's that's are. what I call him, scroll yeah. guy. Scroll he's guy. no longer he's no longer Kingsley Benadire. He's just the scroll yeah. guy. No, he had a funny bit with Gravik. Gravik. I, I don't remember what made me laugh so much, but when whenever he had the binoculars and he was like oh looking at God, Barbie's so feet from afar, his physical. <laughs> Just his, th- yeah, I thought that yeah. I chuckled out loud. He at like, that he part. like, when he gasps, he's like, Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and he's over yeah. there looking through the binocular. <laughs> so good. Yeah, but, but I mean, they, but, but they fit in that, that Gosling equation, don't they, Ronald? It's like Simu yeah. and, and, and Kingsley, uh, they, they both, Kingsley, so that's his first name. Yeah. Did yeah. I get it right? Um, that like, yeah, they too are like, they get extra points yeah. for being like, Oh, you, you're a, you're a strapping, you know, young leading man, and yeah. you're willing to look this idiotic for this long and have the joke be on you, but also like you get to be so much funnier when you yeah. let the joke be on you just a little bit. You and do, I think it's man. great to see them embracing that. You know, I'm all, I, you know, I, I, I've took improv. The bigger swing guys always get the credit. The, the the people that set them up are the people that set them up and make them look good. So like, yeah. Ryan is incredible, but I think that like. As a person who's trying to make things now, my brain is a little more cognizant of like who's giving these people the alley oops. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I see like Simu and, and Kingsley and and America just kind of being this 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 sort of stability around Margot and yeah and and um Ryan just making these characters who they are and and Greta I, Gerwig making. All of that pot, like Greta somehow Gerwig. creating this playground for all this stuff, you know, Man. It, it, it's, it's so crazy that it works so well. Like it, 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 it really is. It is. Just, it really is. Like, it sounds like it could have been like on paper, like, you know, one of those massive IP flexes that is a, is a train wreck, yeah. but I mean, mm-hmm. it really was put into like such good hands. And I think, you know, the way she approached like, you know, just the music and the practical sets and the effects and you know yeah. all these things like really netted such a positive thing as a movie going experience you know yeah. and i think you know see whether you see this in the theater with you know a crowd or you watch it in a theater with a you know yourself or at home whatever i just feel like this movie plays so well to you know the nostalgia of a brand or of a toy or so something that a lot of people can if not relate to directly have 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 like a framework around and you know the importance that this this toy has or this iconography has in, you know, uh, in in America, in the world, yeah. in 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 girlhood, womanhood, you know, yeah. kids in general. But yes. I mean, like specifically women. It's just like, and and they really took such good care in making sure that you know the way that they would exploit that in a movie would be beneficial for like really anybody that wants to watch this movie. Yeah. And that's where I really feel like the movie succeeds in being a four quadrant movie. And it's why people like everybody saw this movie. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's just, it, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Really. The people more felt like they were supposed to go see this movie. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. The more it sat with me and I, and, you know, thinking about the, the scenes and like the deprogramming and even like the weird Barbie scenes and like the casting. Oh, she was the so board, good. Kate McKinnon was so good. You know, like Will Ferrell and, you know, he's he's doing his thing. But I mean, like everything just works across the board. Even him uh, doing his thing almost becomes like a meta joke because he's totally done that does. thing before. Yeah. And he specifically he was a similar character in uh, in the Lego, Lego movie, yeah. which is what this made me think of the most because it yeah. had a similar like, oh, sure. somehow you did a thing on a toy that someone yeah. else could have made into a shameless piece of crap. And you made something like essential uh, that yeah, to me totally, is like one of the yeah. best movies of, of you know, the year or whatever. I also think that there's a great there's a great joke. Uh, towards the end or not it's not even so much like a haha joke but it's just a great point that like talk about meta there's a point at towards the end where the will ferrell character and all the other executives realize that what they're suggesting is going to be they're going to make a lot of money off of this feminism thing you know yeah and and it's not treated as like uh, look at those villains it's treated like oh that's how they buy in yeah. It's like so, yeah. and so you think like, oh, that's how Mattel, that's how the studio like it is a little yeah. bit of a comment on like how things happen, especially when you're talking about a brand like this, a brand this huge that like, yes, you somehow have to you have to please the people that want it to make a billion dollars yeah, order 100%. to make a point that you want to make. I, there's something to that. But I th- yeah. I thought that all of that was like the silliness of those guys was uh, was, you know, like there's a commentary there too. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm wondering how much negotiation they had to go through with like the board of like Mattel to be like, we're going to, we're going to depict you as idiots. <laughs> how comfortable you know, are you with this? Yeah. Right. To, 
listening to her like on a few podcasts that I I I you know she was inter- interviewed on and a part of I think prior. Well, actually, no, she was on it, and I don't think any of the actors or actors were. But I mean, she was talking about that, like just how shocked she was at like how game the the like Mattel you know, as a company and also like in, in the interest of like whatever they want to do in terms of like, you know, making more movies about their products, whatever that becomes. Oh yeah. This is is a bit of a unicorn, I think, but like, I I, I think, I think she was very much like direct and saying like, it it was crazy. Like what they were game for. Like there was really nothing like really not very much except for like maybe one or two things that like she changed in the original script or in you know some sequences that were shot that weren't even things that they were saying no to it was more like her saying like it doesn't this doesn't fit here or right, this right. doesn't work here um it was like the restraint that she was finding where she right. thought they were going to be the ones to pump the brakes and it was more like her you know oh, right right Marco. um but yeah it's, people, it's 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 pretty wild like what you know what they were cool with which is people like getting made fun yeah. of man that, that's I, a, that's I, something I, I was noticing. Right. There, it could be that, yeah. People like getting swiped at. As long as it's like the the, the spirit of it is good, like it's yeah. well intentioned. People really do like getting made fun of. I, I, I think that's kind of like a a thing. So I I really do like that she. It feels like she pushed it to the limit, honestly, as far to the line as you can go, and it really felt. Like it took a swipe, took a jab at him, took a jab at the idea of like, you know, the patriarchy selling something back to women like that in the way that men yeah. often do, that we often do. That was so well done that it 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 shocked me, you know? Yeah. Who's yeah. that guy who's on the board at Mattel, who's also in season oh, one of I The guess. After Party? He's so good. Uh, D- Demetrio, uh, what's his last name? Demetrios is his last name. I know you're talking about. Yeah, I, I was. He just got. Out. He got like three laughs from me out of uh, in Barbie just from being fun, like just from having a funny look on his face. He just yeah. has a. He just has he's, a good physicality. Um, yeah, Jamie Demetrio. Uh, yeah, he was in that first season. I, also, I noticed a lot of the cast from Sex Education. Yes, the, the is uh, in that. Uh, mm, uh, the one lady kind of looks like Margot Robbie. Yeah, Emma uh, Emma Mackey's in Emma it. Emma Mackey and. and uh, uh, Connor Swindellis is in it. He was Aaron, the little, like, uh, like the low level employee at Mattel that takes the news to yeah. Will Ferrell. Yeah, one of and the then, Kens um, was also on the show too. Yeah, that's uh, the one that Black that Kira. uh, uh, in Cootie Gatwa, like that's yes. the one who's going to be in Doctor Who. Yes, congratulations. Yeah, so it's, a him, huge, it's a huge, it's a huge sex education representation. Which, by the way, final season comes out next month. Can't wait for that. Um, also, Alan was great. Michael Sarah had some great moments. Michael Sarah, I love that he kicked ass. I love that, like completely yeah. out of nowhere, he can throw down. <laughs> it was so good, uh, but and and not not like forcing diversity, right? Like diversity just felt kind of natural in this. No, like, it was it was very was great. Yeah. yeah, all sorts of ways. You yeah. Know? That was so cool. It, it it doesn't force it on you. They're just like, hey, Barbie, hey, what's up, Barbie? Hey, what's up, Barbie? They well, I mean, if you were to say it's contr- it's almost like if you have a problem with if quote if anyone were to say it was forced, yeah, I would want to say, what do you think is forced? Tell me which of these is you Tell think me. is because yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think that like whatever you might say is like like if it were to feel forced, I don't know. I just I just don't think this movie like I don't think that's where they were going to go with it, but yeah. I do think there was a natural understanding kind of to what Steve was saying a minute ago about all the different things this movie had to do to work. That's another thing it kind of needed to do yeah. was like not just present this one version of what Barbie's supposed to be. And also like to maybe re, re uh, recapitulate the whole thing for an era where most people don't think of this, you know, as a like like there are different decades of people and different reasons and different attitudes people have that they might love Barbie for various reasons. And I do think this movie kind of what you were saying, Steve, it, it does it like, it gets all those people under this big tent. It like, Oh, yeah. you, you like it ironically. Well, this movie's going to be good for you. Yeah. Oh, you, you, Oh, you messed up your Barbies and cut their hair and put makeup on them. And so <laughs> guess what? There's one of those in this, you know, but you also have Issa Rae as like uh, the, 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 uh, you know, president, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, it's, it's not forced. It's, um, 
Not it's just great. part of it's like part of the tapestry of a movie that's really trying to do a lot of things. And I guess that is the remarkable thing is that somehow it, it clicks. It didn't feel like yeah. they were doing too much. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, but the, the tide of like we're making more movies out of toys. That is, uh, Get out I of mean, here. it's going to be we're, we're going to, you know, the, when, when they announced that Lena Dunham is doing a uh, Polly Pocket movie, that's when I was like, this sounds like an onion parody of. Yes. Of Polly what they, I, the, I think I, I think I wrote back to you like that's a joke, right? Like no, I mean, text yeah. thread. Yeah. You're like, no, no, this is real. Very, Let me link real. you to the variety. Order. But it's like they never learn the right lessons, you know, oh, and no, when it comes the to these types yeah. of things. The lesson is not let's get 43 toy related movies in 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 production. The lesson is like, let's give Greta Gerwig a few bucks to see what she wants to do. You know, right. Yeah, for sure. And then, yeah, not even to make a Barbie two or to sequelize this thing. It's like, yeah, let's just kind of what's the next original yeah. fun thing that somebody can you know do and whether it's leveraging a toy let's have a conversation but yeah i don't know this it's, it was really really pretty great i was i was very um very entertained i loved it yeah um so yeah that's coming out if uh if you didn't see it in theaters if you want to see it again at home even if you have just uh on demand this coming tuesday on the 12th so you can find it on uh, any of the digital platforms uh what else anything else you guys want to mention before we wrap up that's the show all right, cool. <laughs> Moviesmovie.com is the website. YouTube.com slash podcast. You want to watch the video option. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks to uh, talk about some stuff. You know, that's what usually happens. Um, my required viewing pick as a reminder is Theater Camp, which also comes out on Video On Demand next week. Uh, and also, I think, on Streaming On Demand on Hulu. So you can watch that if you want to check it out with us. And uh, we'll be back with a new episode in uh, a couple weeks. So uh, we'll see you guys soon. And uh, as always, you made our day. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>